everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We have a really fun episode for you. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Terry's here. Hello. And today we are very excited. We have another author interview. We love talking with authors on the podcast. And today we have author Alisa Maxwell with us. And she's the author of Murder at the Breakers. And this is the novel that the new Gilded Newport Mysteries, Murder at the Breakers, uh, that is on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, uh, is based on. And Elisa, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted. Yes. So why don't you, since your first time on the show, why don't you introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about how you got started writing. Okay, well, I'm Alyssa Maxwell, and I write, of course, The Gilded Newport Mysteries, and also A Lady and Ladies Made Mysteries. Mm -hmm. Now, I got started writing a long time ago. (laughs) We're talking like 30 years ago. Uh, Back in the 90s, I had had been working with a friend who suddenly out of the blue announced that she was having one of her, her novels published, and we didn't even know she was writing. But I had always been interested in doing that. So we began to talk. And I actually began to write, also sort of on the sly. But um, she she talked me into going to some writers' organization meetings, and then she invited me into her critique group. So that's how I really got going. I sold my first book in 2004, so 20 years wow. ago now. That was a historical romance, though. And I wrote okay. several of those until it, you know it, it finally occurred to me that I was always writing some kind of mystery or suspense plot in my romances. So, you know, I realized like, wow, I I think mystery might actually be be a better fit for me because I also like plot and a romance is very introspective Mm -hmm. and it focuses more on the emotions. Whereas with mysteries, I can get into all those wonderful details of clues and motives and, you know, having my my sleuth uh, go all around town, uh, hunting down clues. So it, I decided to try my hand at that. And I have a good friend, another uh, cozy mystery author named Nancy J. Cohen. She writes the Bad Hair Day Mysteries. She had been my critique partner for a long time. And she kind of took me under her wing and taught me a lot about what goes into a mystery. Um, so, you know, with her help, with the help of the rest of my critique group, with the help of my agent who helped me develop the Gilded Newport Mysteries, I wrote Murder at the Breakers. And it, it you know, it took, it went the rounds a bit in the publishing world and was finally bought by Kensington. And here we are. Um, my 12th book in the series will be out in August. Wow. And in, in the middle of all that, though, I, my editor had an idea for a Downton Abbey style mystery with, you know, with a mystery twist. Downton Abbey with a mystery twist. So that's when I started writing my Lady and Ladies Made Mysteries, where you have uh, Dual Sleuth, the lady and her maid. Mm-hmm. Uh, investigating upstairs and downstairs, you know, with the with the elite, the wealthy, and of course the servants and the more common people. So that's also a lot of fun. And that's set later than the Gilded Newport Mysteries. That's set in post World War One England. So they're very different. Okay. Now, did you always uh, love uh, read like reading mysteries? Was it a favorite of yours? I. I read uh, read mysteries. I read a lot of different things, though, coming up. I read a, more mysteries now than I did, say, when I was young. But, you know, of course, my friends and I all, all read the, the Nancy Drew books. Um, but my my real love has always been historicals. So whether that mm. was you know, historical mysteries or historical fiction or even straight history and biographies, you know, my head is always kind of stuck in the past. Um, that's what I love to, that's what interests me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that, that, uh, that there, there would be an interesting sort of to dive into the characters and just that time, those time periods that, that's so different than our own. Right. And it, there's a real challenge to it for me as a writer, because first of all, there's no modern forensics there, you know, there are no modern ways to figure out, uh, you know, who did it um, in the Gilded Newport Mysteries, there aren't even really fingerprints yet. You know, they hadn't developed fingerprinting. Mm. So 
there, there's that challenge of how do you solve a mystery based on the, the sleuth's uh, wits and her determination, you know, and her, her skills in, in reading people. But then there's also the restrictions for women in those time periods. So yeah. she also has to get, or, or all of all three of my sleuths have to get around that. And if they break any of those social rules pertaining to women, they have to understand that they're breaking a rule and they have to know that there are going to be consequences and they have to deal with those consequences. So it's never easy. Yeah. yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Are you a pantser or a plotter? I mean, I think with a mystery, you'd have to be a plotter, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I'm a plotter. I, my first couple of books, I guess you would, could have called me a pantser. But for one thing, my publisher wants to see a synopsis of each book. Um, you know, they use it for their, for their marketing department and their cover department. So there's that. But I, I like doing it because this way, when I sit down to write every day, I have my, my roadmap, my, my scenes are sketched out basically. So I know where I'm going every day. It's not set in stone. I, I always do make changes. Um, because, you know, it's hard to plot ahead of time before your characters actually, you know, get into doing what they're doing. So mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, what, what you planned isn't kind of, the action that they end up wanting to take. But yes, I, I'm definitely a plotter these days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you end up with Newport, Rhode Island is the focus in the, yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, uh, that goes back to um, the fact that my husband (laughs) is a Newporter born and raised and his family has roots there going back, you know, centuries um, for some of them. So he, he's, the family's very rooted there. And um, when I met him, I began to learn about Newport from more of an insiders from the, from the point of view of the people that live there and not just as a tourist, Um, you know, because Newport is very different to people who come in the summer. It's very exciting. It's very international, you know, very sporting. It's exciting, but the rest of the year, it's a small town. And everybody knows each other. And, you know, it's a very tight-knit community. So I, I learned about that. So that that helped me develop Emma's character. Mm-hmm. Um, and Newport is also so atmospheric. There's so much history. There, there's just so many wonderful neighborhoods um, that, that span back to the colonial era and, and all through the Victorian age, the Gilded Age, until the 20th century, obviously. So there's just uh, so much material and and so much history there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about the this first book that the the movie is is based on? Right. Okay. So it, this is the book where we we are introduced to Emma and her her family and circle of friends. She is half Vanderbilt on her father's side. She's a descendant of the first Cornelius. But her branch of the family, the, fa- the whatever fortune, you know, his daughter, Cornelius's daughter inherited has long since been depleted. So Emma's just like a regular Newporter. Um, but the Vanderbilt family who comes to stay at the Breakers every summer have, a, have included her. They, they like her. They do consider her a distant cousin. So 
through them, she kind of is able to straddle both worlds, you know, the ordinary Newport and the Newport of the 400. And in this book, the Breakers has just been rebuilt after a fire. So the, the Italian Palazzo is now in existence and they have, they're having their first party, which was also Gertrude Vanderbilt's, their daughter's coming out party. And during that party, a man is killed and Emma's brother is accused of the crime. And that's what sets Emma on the trail of the killer because she has so much faith in her brother. She just, you know, cannot believe he did this. And, you know, the, the trail sets her to uh, members of the Vanderbilt family themselves, to other people in town, to a, a, an old friend of hers. And she really has to be investigating um, in all aspects of Newport society at that time. <laughs> but what in, what inspired you to choose the Vanderbilts? Because there's a lot of like famous uh, or we see them as aristocrats or money like in that period of time, like the mm -hmm. Astors and stuff. Yes. So what made the Vanderbilts so like appealing to you personally? Uh, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, it was the fact that the Breakers was opening in the summer of 1895 with this big party. So I also thought that the most recognizable and familiar mansion in Newport is the Breakers. The Breakers is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, the most ornate, and it's considered the jewel in the preservation society's crown of mansions. It's, it's, you know, so special. And when people go to Newport um, in the summer, you know, as tourists, what, that's one of the first things they do is go and tour the breakers. So I thought, you know, why not start off this series with what is the most recognizable name and the most recognizable house in Newport? Now, I do get to other families in, later in the series. I, I do um, take the readers to Beechwood, which was owned by Mrs. Astor. There are other Vanderbilt houses um, in the mix. And then some other names, the Berwins, the Golays, the King family. So I do explore quite a bit of Newport High Society. Is it hard figuring out sort of the red herrings when you're writing a mystery? Uh, kind of what you're well, going to do to sort of trick, not trick people, but right. well, obfuscate. Going back to my friend Nancy Cohen, one of the most important things she taught me early on was that when you're setting up your characters, you should give each one something they're trying to hide, whether it has to do with the murder or not. So this way, everybody looks guilty, and that's where your red herrings come from. You know, if this one is hiding something and Emma Emma gets that vibe from them, she's going to start, you know, following them around and seeing what they're up to. And that will lead the reader to think, hmm, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe mm -hmm. that's the person. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. But how did you develop Emma as a character? Um, well, the, the half Vanderbilt, half New Porter felt like a good choice because again, she can be, she can function in both worlds. She's welcome fairly much in, in both worlds. You know, at least she can get through the doors of these mansions. Um, I thought a society reporter also gives her, you know, entree into the mansions because she goes to cover the balls and the garden parties and, and whatever um, every season. Now, there was a, a Gilded Age journalist named Nellie Bly, who, you know, I read about during my research. And Nellie was um, someone who just wouldn't be relegated to the society pages. And she took a lot of risks and she broke a lot of rules um, and, and she got her story because she was so determined. So Emma's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of Nellie in Emma. Um, and, and just, you know, what I've learned about Newporters, uh, my, my husband's family in particular is that they are very willing to help each other. Uh, my mother-in-law was somebody who just jumped right in. If something needed doing, if someone needed something, she didn't wait around to see if somebody else would do it. She, she did it. Um, so I gave, I think I gave some of that quality to Emma as well. I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Elise Murray and her exciting book, Society Girl. 
Set in the mysterious world of Oxford University's secret societies, Society Girl follows Sam, a Duke's estranged daughter, as she attempts to join the most famous club of them all, the Animo Society. Her final initiation challenge is simple. Find a man, convince him she's in love with him, and then break his heart in humiliating fashion. Hardened by her father's rejections, believing that the Animo Society is her key to his love and acceptance, Sam throws herself into making Dano Best, her father's chauffeur and local musician, fall for her. But she never counted on falling in love with him right back. Fans of Colleen Hoover, Anna Hong, and Mia Sheridan will love Society Girl, a sweeping romance from best-selling novelist and screenwriter Elise Murray. Free for Kindle Unlimited users for a limited time. Go to elisemurray.com slash novels slash Society Girl for more information. Or you can use the affiliate link below. How long did it take you to research the history uh, or certain events that you wanted to include, particularly in this novel? But I'm sure it's a lot of research for each each book because the Gilded Age or that era is so fascinating, um, especially in high society. Yeah, it, and there's a lot of material available, so there is a lot a lot to go through. Um, you know, I don't remember really how long it took me to research this this book, but it did take me longer for any of the other books because obviously I was I was setting up the world, I was learning about you know the 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 mores and the manners of the time. And I really had to research everything, you know, the clothes and, and, you know, the transportation and the food and, you know, just everything. It got a little bit easier with the next and, you know, subsequent books because I had already built that framework. But, um, you know, and, and there's so many rabbit holes you go down to, you know, I could spend all day looking at Worth Gowns on the Met website <laughs> or shoes or whatever. Um, because all that just I love and it fascinates me. Well, but I would, I would be say- doing that all day long, <laughs> yeah. looking at the clothes. I would be doing that all day long, looking at the clothes. I know. Yeah. I mean, it, it, because they were works of art, you know, they yeah. were not just clothes. They were unique for each woman, mm-hmm. um, work, works of art and craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. But I would say, it, you know, it probably took me a few months between the research and the plotting of the first book. Um, it wasn't under contract yet, so I could take my time with it. I, you know, there were there were no uh, no deadlines at that point. So uh, you know, and then and then of course there were the the biographies. You know, reading about each individual person and learning as much as I could, especially about the Vanderbilts because they are Emma's family, and you know they are very important to her. So I wanted to get learn enough about them that I could portray them. In, in their character, in their actual character. Was it fun coming up with the, like the secondary characters, like your, uh, like Jack and Derek and some of the other characters? Oh yeah. That, that was lots of fun. But when people ask me, you know, how did you do that? I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's like they just existed fully formed one day. There they were. Yeah. I mm-hmm. guess all that comes from research and, you know, into other people that lived at that time and, and things like that. But I, you know, not to disappoint you and not to, um, you know, have any spoilers, but there are some characters in the book that will not be in the movie. Oh, right. Yeah. What does that feel like to have your, like, I would, to me, it's like, if I wrote a book, that would feel like my baby. How does it feel to like, when (laughs) an adaption comes, an adaptation comes and they gut certain things or they move around certain things just to fit the time format or the network or whatever? Yeah, and there was there was you know a certain amount of that uh, because they're they're fitting a three hundred page book into an hour and a half time slot. But I really felt that they stuck to the basic plot well enough that I was happy with it. Um, you know, some of the details are a little bit different in in um, how Emma solves the crime and and you know what the, the resolution is. But no, I was I was very happy with how it turned out. Yeah, you know, I knew going in that they were not going to take every word I wrote and put it into a movie. Yeah. So I was prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how did, did they first uh, contact like your agent or you yeah, how did that how did it end up happening? Yeah, that was before the pandemic. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's been in development yeah. a long time, huh? Yeah, yeah. One of the executive producers has a house in Rhode Island, and he just happened to go to Newport and tour the Breakers one day. And he saw the book. The, the My books are carried in all the gift shops 
which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So he saw it and he'd been thinking about, you know, it'd be great to do a Newport project at, you know, for, for Hallmark. He, he had Hallmark in mind for this. And trying to think, was this before or after the Gilded Age came out? It might have been actually before. I think it was before yeah, the Gilded Age even started. Yeah. So <laughs> um, he, he contacted my agent pretty quickly. But the pandemic and then the writer's strike slowed everything down. So at first we had a shopping agreement. So he could bring, you know, he and his partner could bring a proposal to Hallmark to see if they would even be willing to do this, to take this on. And they were. So it was optioned. Option was renewed. <laughs> Years are going by and I'm going, <laughs> well, you know, you know, it is rare for an option to actually see the light of day as a full production. Mm -hmm. But last September, we got the word that, you know, guess what? We're filming in a week. And yeah. that was it. And that, that happened so fast. Well, we were so surprised because Hallmark never does like period pieces. No, no. This is their first period mystery. So I'm like really honored about that. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. They yeah, have fulfilled yeah. my dream of <laughs> going back into doing, because I, I love his, I live and breathe historical stuff. It's mostly what I read, mostly what I watch. So I'm super excited. Yeah. Same here. I mean, exactly. So. And I, I, if there's a period thing, anything on, I will watch it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, did you get to be involved at all in the filming, like with dailies or anything like that? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have been on set just to watch, but yeah. No. Now, once you sell your film rights, it's up to the production company to to do with it as they will uh-huh you know i was not consulted it, very few authors i think are actually consulted during the filming you mm -hmm. know if you're jk rowling i'm sure she was right. but <laughs> yeah um do you how would you sell this book and the series in general to the hallmarkies what do you think they'll like about it what makes it special huh well i think we have a Definite blend of cozy mystery. And I know Hallmarkies love cozy mystery. <laughs> yes. That's what Hallmark does and does so well. But with, you know, this, this whole historical slant to it gives it a, just a new dimension. It's something new. It's something that maybe they haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, we both enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun reading it. Yeah. So oh, an, thank you. Yeah, it's a nice, breezy, fun little mystery. Yeah, and yeah. right away, like. I loved her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah. right away. Yeah. 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 I think people will, will have a, a good time with Emma. She's totally. she is a, she's not perfect, and she makes mistakes. And she's mm -hmm. uh, very sweet. Yes. So she's a I nice think, girl. Yes. <laughs> I wrote her wanting her to be a nice girl. Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah. uh but a strong but a strong young woman and a determined mm -hmm. one yeah we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the hallmarkies merch store full of festive designs by artists like jessica miller carrie from hallmark comics and more you can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Well, we like to end our interviews with some fun get to know you questions. All right. Well, the first question is, uh, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? It changes, but right now it's salty caramel. Oh, nice. That's great. That's good. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and your favorite, what is your favorite color? Ah, I'm going to say red, especially deep red. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. All right. What music are you into? Uh, I, I listen to a lot of classical. 
And, you know, I feel, I feel like I'm such a dinosaur. You know, I love the old stuff, obviously. You know, all that great music from the 70s. That's what I grew up with. So, you know, some Pink Floyd, some Grateful mm. Dead. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, some of the stuff, yeah. Yeah, very good. And uh, what would be your go-to food on a date? You must oh, have, like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Date night oh, food, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sushi. Oh, that's yeah. That's a good one because it's it's very clean, not messy. Like you don't. You're right. right. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's also, you know, they bring it on platters, and so you're you're basically sharing. Right. Yeah. So, Plus, like, you get to see how brave your date is. Yeah. Well, my husband, can my husband come? On yes. Date? <laughs> because if they're if they're if they're not that brave or they're too brave, then you you can learn a lot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right what is your go-to date night activity if you're going out and doing something oh for going out we don't like to go out <laughs> <in the house. laughs> um but you know if, if if we do oh gosh what would i like to do we just don't anymore what i used to do would love going to the theater i guess i'm gonna say oh, the yeah. theater yeah yeah love, yeah love. Same with us. Same. <laughs> Same. Yeah. All right. This next question is, is, is a hot issue, but dogs or cats? <laughs> um, I have to say dogs. I actually love both dogs and cats. I don't have either. I'm very allergic to cats though. So I'm going to go with oh. dogs. <laughs> Same. I am a cat person. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love them all. I really, I do, but you know. It's hard when you have allergies. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Which would you rather be at beaches or mountains? Oh, this one. Because again, I love both. I love going to the beach, but I, I guess I'm going to say mountains now. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love, we, my husband and I both love to walk and hike and, and just look at beautiful scenery. Yeah. I thought you might say beaches because of just because of Newport. Well, yeah, but I, I live in Florida, actually, which would oh, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, that's something we, we used to do quite a lot, and we do mm-hmm. it left now. Yeah, cool. And uh, which is your favorite holiday? Oh, Christmas. Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all in for Christmas, yeah. you know, the yeah. decorations, <laughs> the music, and everything. Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's hard to beat Christmas because it's like a whole season. As opposed yeah. to like other, which are just a day or a week, maybe. Yeah, no, it's, it's a lifestyle for <laughs> like lifestyle. Thanksgiving yes. on through New Year's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we're bypassing uh, Halloween now to celebrate Christmas. So. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last question: What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Uh, well, okay. I, I guess I should say a Hallmark one, but my you, you said romantic movie, and that would be um, Moonstruck. Yes. Uh, that was yes. The one with Cher yes. and Nicholas Cage. Yes. Moonstruck. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love Favorite. that because you know what? It's an it's an opera without the music. And when you yes. look at that plot and those people, that is exactly the kind of stuff that happens. In an opera, all that angst and drama yes. and mm-hmm. love. And, and then when um, Nicolas Cage, you know, talks about uh, what love is, you know, he says, what, snowflakes are perfect, the stars are perfect, but not on. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> so good. I watch that movie at least once a year. Yeah. Love will drive oh, you out wonderful. of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we just did our ranking of the rom coms of the 1980s, and we both had uh-huh. a Moonstruck High. Yes. Oh, high. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a favorite. I mean, and there even is an opera in the movie. So. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's really based around opera. And it's funny, though, for me to say that it's not a historical. Um, historical? Mm-hmm. Oh, Shakespeare in Love. That was so mm-hmm. romantic. Oh, yeah. I love it. Except it doesn't end happily, you know. That's true. But Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's uh, I like that one too. I think it got kind of a bad rap because people were like, "How could it win over Saving Private Ryan?" But like apples mm. and oranges, 
Sometimes the rom coms win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah 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 well thank you so much for coming and talking with us it's so much fun and uh we really appreciate it and we're excited about the new movie it's gonna be so fun to get to and after reading get to see these characters come to life it'll be fun right absolutely thank you so much for having me on today this has been fun so if people want to follow you on social media or anything like that do you have anything like that you want to share yeah well I have my uh, website, AlyssaMaxwell.com. I'm on Facebook. I have a personal Alyssa Maxwell page and an author page. Um, and right now, actually, I have an event page, the Murder at the Breakers TV premiere, I think I call it. Um, so people can can actually post, and after the movie, they can come on and say what they thought. And right now, I'm sharing little tidbits and things about that oh, movie. Oh, yeah. So we'll put that. all that in the description so people can check that okay. out and Great. uh yeah thanks again for coming talking with us this is a lot of fun yes well thank you thank both you. Have, a, have a great rest of your day <laughs> we'd like to thank Alyssa for coming on the podcast this was so much fun to get to talk with her let us know what you think of of the things we talked about your excitement for the new movie and uh, it was just fun to get to see the behind the scenes of of writing a mystery so uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section or on Twitter. And uh, Terry, where can people find you? I'm at Twitter at Flurry Heaven. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure that you are following me on Goodreads. I would really appreciate that. And you can follow the podcast, A Homeworkies Pod, A Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. It really, really helps us out. And it would help us, especially right now with what's been going on with this iPhone update that they did. And so the more reviews that we have, it helps the algorithm. So if you could take a second to do that, we would really be grateful. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please uh if you are watching on YouTube, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is the best way you can support us. You get exclusive reviews. You get to be part of the patron watch alongs every month and lots of other fun perks. This month, we have Donna Benedicto coming on to uh, watch Wedding Cake Dreams, her movie with us. And it'll be real fun. And we'll get to hear a lot about behind the scenes craft services for sure. <laughs> and other fun details. So you definitely want to be part of the Patreon. It's really fun. And then we also have the merch store where you can get tons of fun Hallmark inspired designs and the perfect design for the Valentine in your life. Uh, so check that out. And uh, thanks so much uh, to Alyssa and we'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye.